how do you go out on the field when you have like 40,000, however many yeah. thousand people watching you live on top of however many people are watching you online right. and not get nervous or like fumble the ball? Well, you do fumble sometimes, but you're not trying to. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, man, I mean, for for us, especially us in the athlete world, I feel like we've been performing since we could walk, you know, like it's like once we like I started playing soccer like four years old. Right. And you start to do that. And I've done that forever. I've always played in front of a crowd in the fall playing football. Right. And so you start to you start to get out there and you start to it becomes routine for you. Now, when it got really big, because I went from about a couple thousand to right, 60,000, 70,000. Um, you definitely got some, like you, I still get nervous before games, right? I feel those, those butterflies, you know? Um, but really I think the preparation and then holding yourself to the highest standard, putting the most pressure on yourself is what's helped me. Like no one can ever put any more pressure on myself than I put on myself. You know, like I have fans that will call me X, Y, Z. I need to do this, do that. Coaches on my ass all the time. And it's like, that's great. I need that push, but you're not going to push me more than I'm going to push myself, especially because where I came from, how I've, how I've got there and what I'm doing right now. And so that really helps me push through. You literally just, it's just blinders. It becomes like I'm in a trans, like I'm just like so focused on just what's in front of me um, as far as just all the, all, just football, right? I, I don't even hear the crowd when you're on the field. And so it's kind of, it's kind of trippy actually, because it's like, you know, they're there, but it's like, I'm just locked into signals and things like that. And there's times where you can't not hear them. You can't hear anything. Right. But you can still communicate. We have all, we prep, prepare like crazy for those uh, scenarios. So we can just basically go in out there and perform under so much noise where we can't hear it yourself, yourself think. I remember playing Kansas city one night. Um, and it was the loudest stadium I've ever been in the loudest um, environment I'd ever been in. And it was Philip Rivers. We were a few years ago, but everything was just signals. Everything was just signals. Mm. Get it done. And so talking and boom, he's back there clapping, trying to get the snap, you know. And uh, it's pretty epic, though, man. Like moments like that are like, man. Like when you look back, you're like, man, that game. Like things like that, you'll yeah. never forget. I'm, oh, I'm really curious now. When you're in the middle of a game, coming up with the different strategies, how much of that evolves, like on the field? Yeah. Because I, I bet you go into it thinking, all right, we're gonna do this and this right. and this. But then that that could change in like a second. Oh, how do yeah. you know how to adapt? You change like one what, play. What you know, you're really what, what everyone's what, thinking. What's working? That's what that's what's gonna that's what's gonna you know guide your game plan. Yeah. Um. Because you have different matchups on the field, right? They have strengths to their defense. We have strengths to our offense, right? And so can we exploit those? And maybe it changes. Maybe okay, this player is playing right really good this game. We didn't expect that, or vice versa. Um, and so really it comes down to, okay, what's working for us? And guess what? We're going to, it's going to be some trial and error. You come out, you have usually your first 10 plays are scripted. Like we know what we're going to run on the first 10 plays, right? No matter what we're running these plays just to see what they're in, how they're reacting, how they're adjusting. Mm. And then from then on, let's play ball. Let's adjust and go on the fly. But how do you know what the other person's going to be doing? Do you just, have you just played with each other long so, enough that you could kind of anticipate like, Hey, if I run over here, this guy is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. for sure. For sure. Like right. just hours of countless hours of film study and then practice. Right. right. And it's like, Hey, if they're in this coverage, we're doing this. If they switch to this coverage, we're doing this. And so it's all, it's all an art, right? Defenses mm -hmm. are trying to disguise, you know, are they, in, are they playing it this way? Are they playing it that way? And for the most part, there's no new defenses getting created. Like the ones that work are the ones that are already implemented. And so you pretty much know the lingo and know what the structure of different defenses look like. And so then you try to basically adjust with different route concepts in between those and give yourself options where it's like, if it's cover two, we're working over here, right? If it's man, we're working over here, right? So you give options. That's why the quarterback mm -hmm. position is getting paid $50 million a year now. Cause you have to, you have to see all this and adjust on the fly, right?